transcripts in our previous lecture we have learned about the torque acting on a system of particles and we found that the particle in a system interact with each other and the forces acting on a pair of particles cancel their effect and we found that the total internal torque acting on the system is zero. Now today we will discuss about the relationship between external torque and angular momentum for a system of particles. So here we will consider the external forces acting on the system taken into consideration in addition to the internal forces and then find out the relation between the torque and the angular momentum. So as we are in as we consider our lecture, there is any part of the system in this inertial frame of reference x by when which we believe is at O and we assume that there are any number of particles whose position vector are R1, R2, R3 and so on Rn. And let it be M particles, and their mass will be M1, M2, M3, and so on, Mn respectively. And we are interested to find out the relation between external torque and angular momentum. So we have considered that the force F1 E, F1 E, that stands for external force acting on particle 1, F2 E. External force acting on particle 2 and so on F and external force acting on M particle. So we have considered the effect of each external force is acting on the particle in addition to the internal force that is mutual force force on particle 1 due to other particles, force on particle 2 due to other particles. So as we know the angular momentum on IF particles, since we are interested in IF particle and then we will generalize the expression, N I is R I cross P I. Here P I is the linear momentum, L I is the angular momentum, and R I is the position vector. Now, differentiate on both sides, we will get D L I upon D P equal to D by D P. R i cross P i. We will apply the product to R i and it is cross D P i upon D P plus D R i upon D P cross P i. Since D R i upon D time rate of change of displacement is velocity, so it is R i cross d p i upon d p plus d i cross p i is m i d i mass of r particle and velocity of r particle so v i cross v i is zero this value is zero and according to Newton's law force is d p upon d p since we are interested in r particles of d p i Right? F i is dp i upon dp, so it will be r i cross f i is d l i upon t. Now, the total force acting on i f particle f i is the sum of the external force on the i f particle that is with f i e as we consider. This is the force f1 f2 and f i. E stands for external force acting on these particles respectively, on particle 1 to 3 and so on respectively. So this is external plus internal force. What is this internal force? F I J. Force on I F particle due to J F particle summation G. So this is the total force acting on I F particle. It includes force, force on I F particle due to first particle, first vehicle to 1, first vehicle to 2 
force on ion particle due to second particle k is equal to c force on ion particle due to third particle that is the ion so this is the view we have included the internal and external forces acting on the ion particle in which we are interested so we will assume this value here we will get r i cross f i external plus summation j f i j we will rewrite this r i cross f i external plus r i cross summation j f i j goes on i f particle into j j f particle now this r cross f as we discussed in the previous lecture it is the torque so this is torque on ion particle due to external force applied on ion particle so we will represent it torque i e that is the external torque acting on the particle plus so this is torque on ion particle due to j particle so this is Summation J tau I J. Now summing over all the particles, we will get summation over all the particles. I equal to one to n B L I upon J T equal to summation I equal to one to n tau I external. Plus summation i equal to one to n summation j equal to one to n tau i j i is not equal to j. Now, as we learned in our previous lecture, this is the internal torque. This internal torque is due to the internal forces. Since internal forces act in pair and the force on i particle f i j is equal to force on j particle due to i particle that in opposite direction so they cancel their effect so that's why we found out that this term is zero you can watch the previous lecture or in the suggested videos so finally we have d by d t Summation i equal to one to n l i equal to summation i equal to one to n tau i external. So this is the sum of the angular momentum of all the particles. That means sum of the total sum of the angular momentum acting on the system. So it's better to use that. Capital L D L by T. So this is the total torque acting on the system due to the external. This is the total torque acting on the system. So it's better to write simply tau. So D L by D T is equal to tau. So this equation states that the time rate of change of angular momentum of system about a fixed point. In in inertial plane is equal to total external torque acting on the system torque about that point. If there is no external torque acting on the system, in that case, d l by d t equal to torque. Since there is no external torque on the system, so torque equal to zero. So d l by d t equal to zero. So we can write. Vector L is constant. Vector L means angular momentum vector. That means both magnitude and direction. So this means that total angular momentum of the system of particle is constant both in magnitude and direction. Thus, the total angular momentum of the system is conserved. This is the law of conservation of angular momentum. For a system of particles, this theorem states that the angular momentum of system of particle is conserved on the 
means constant if no external retort at on the system. So this is all about the relation between external retort and angular momentum for the system of particle and lar conjugation of angular momentum for the system of particles. Thank you for watching.